I'm about to cry, dude. <laughs> Don't cry, baby. I haven't thought about this like that uh, in a while. The Raiders pick you up. And they say that reporting date is the day of our wedding. <laughs> I don't know how much to share of this. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Couple Things. With Sean and Andrew. A pot. Is your voice okay? What? Did it just crack? No. Podcast all about couples. And the things they go through. Today is Story Series, Episode 3. People enjoyed this. Oh, wow. Also realize that most of the stories are kind of self-deprecating yeah. towards me. You know? Yeah, you need but to tell some embarrassing stories for you. Do you I have think any? that's today. Is it embarrassing stories for you? Yeah. Um, I think there is one embarrassing story for you, but I think I'll take the brunt of it. So if you're new here, uh, we usually do interviews with like therapists or counselors or like celebrities to kind of hear how they do relationships and marriage. But uh, we started this series for us, really, just for Sean and I to cement some of our favorite stories that we've not documented um, in a real way. This is consider it like our, you know, memoirs. It's our memoir. 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 Wow. <laughs> memoir. Memoir. Um, a lot of these are embarrassing stories that we can't believe we're telling you, but we a lot are. of them are fun, wild. Are. If you missed story series episode one and two, please go back and listen to those. They're ridiculous. They involve E. coli and a black bear <laughs> and and Caribbean countries. Yeah. And illegal things. Um, first up, Andrew, I think we've skimmed over this story before, but why don't we just share the real story behind the first date and the first sleepover? Oh, man. Uh, that was one of we did a <laughs> dating series on our main channel. Where we went back and like screenshotted all these kind of things, but it's hard to it's hard to do justice to a story when it you is. have to shove it into like an eight minute YouTube video yeah. for the algorithm's sake. So the full story of our first date. Okay, 2012. Let me take you back to the fall of 2012. The Summer Olympics in London had just occurred. And let me summarize the Summer Olympics real quick. Great. I was in and out of a relationship that I had been in for three or four years. It was one of those where it was like it was over, but we were kind of back and forth on it. Um, and he had this ultimatum with me. Not ultimatum. He just had a stipulation of like I couldn't go see my ex-boyfriend whose name was Taylor Finney, who were like he was really the, close he was friends. Like, that? like stipulations like that. Yeah. Okay, we continue. were young. Carry on. We don't dumb. need to live in the past. Um, and I was at the Olympics, and Taylor's a really good friend of mine. There was nothing romantic there anymore. I just wanted to support him. Taylor Finney was a phenomenal cyclist for the U.S. who was competing at the Olympics. Yes. So I kind of like stuck it to my ex-boyfriend. I was like, you know what? I don't have to tell him about it. We're on the outs anyways. I'm going to go cheer Taylor on at his event. So I went... I got to sit next to his teammate for his whole race. I got to watch him, cheer him on. I was really proud of him. And his teammate happened to be Guy East. That's right. So my brother was a professional cyclist. Cue pictures on screen. <laughs> and uh, had actually made the Olympics. I'll never forget yeah. seeing the letter, though, that he yeah, like made the Olymp Olympics, but they cut his event. Yeah, which is wild. before. So he was like training out at the OTC Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. And then uh, they just decided we're not going to do that event anymore. He was like a track cyclist for the Olympics, was really talented, but ended up going anyway to go support his teammates, uh, one of which was Taylor Finney. So he bumps into Sean, and I think um, this was when you were looking at going to schools, and there was yep. like some article that came out and was published that said you were looking at uh, Vanderbilt and Stanford yep. as schools of choice. And so my brother, I think, came across it. And um, I'll never forget, like, he texted us, like, hey, you want, I just met Sean John. He posted a Facebook picture. Yeah. And cute picture. Yeah. And then he said, I'm going to try to link you two up to see if you could talk about Vanderbilt. Wait, wink, wink. Like, Great. Wink, wink. At the time, I had zero social media accounts. I was like, uh, I was like this guy who had dreadlocks. And not you had kidding. like four girlfriends. Let's be real. I, <laughs> that's a story for another day. <laughs> I had like dreadlocks. I was anti-social media, which is ironic because now that's what we do yeah. all day, every day. But I formed my first social media account, a Twitter, to tweet at Sean. Yep. And then hopefully my game plan was form a Twitter, tweet at Sean. 
she follows me, hopefully. I DM her, get her phone number, it's game on. And it went according to plan. It did. So you DM'd me. We went back and forth. I said, I heard you met my brother Guy. If you're looking for a tour of Vandy, I'll I'll give you one. I think it was almost verbatim. Though. I also want to backtrack too. The way this had all worked out, the reason why I had gotten on Twitter and responded is we were young. I was young. I was 20 years old. This relationship that I was getting out of wasn't like horrible. It wasn't toxic. We had really good times. But you all remember when you're a teenager, you do dumb things. Like even him having stipulations. We were just young and naive. Sean, and what she's trying to say was at rock bottom and desperate times <laughs> call for desperate measures. No, so but I did get excited at the idea of being set up with someone. I was like, yeah, I want to I want to try something new. And here I was, this, you know, collegiate football all star, which, <laughs> yeah. which is ironic because I wasn't at all. I was a long snapper, which is not like, you know, and we I was at Vanderbilt, which is not historically a good football program. But I will say background. I'm in London at the Olympics. I'm with my agent at the time. I know Taylor Finney and his family so well. Taylor Finney is backing the East family. Taylor's parents are like, these are amazing people. My agent is also doing her due diligence. She's like, this is an amazing family. He's a good guy. He's got a great reputation. Like, we were doing, you know, was that pretty CSI. Normal? That was pretty normal of you to ask your ex-boyfriend's families about your future boyfriend? I think that just goes to show what our relationship was. Like, yeah, we were yeah. friends. He was all for it. He's like, this family's awesome. Okay, Give this now a that shot. we've given you 10 minutes okay. of background. So, yes. Sean and I meet. That's how we meet. We did, uh, I got her phone number on Twitter, and then we did like a one 20 minute phone call. Yeah. I'll never forget that night. Yes, you know what my favorite candy bar was. I like, I think I asked oh, to favorite. pray for you, or yeah. like if you go to church or whatever. And for whatever reason, um, you didn't really talk to me much after that. But I was intimidated. When you did talk to me was the night of my birthday, okay? September 17th, 2012. It was like 11.59 p.m. You can't make this up. I get a text from Sean, who I haven't heard from in mo- like probably a month. She was out in L.A. doing Dancing with the Stars. And she says in caps and, and like odd punctuation with like a greater than symbol and a question mark and ex- is, do you want to fly out to L.A.? It wasn't like a happy birthday, but I was like, she texted me this one minute left on my birthday. She must have known. She loves me. <laughs> and what was actually going on is I was rooming with, um, one of my best friends at the time in Los Angeles. I was in the middle of the Dancing with the Stars All Star season. My ex boyfriend and I were still on the rocks, going back and forth between this like gray period, whatever. And I had just kind of gotten to the end of my rope, and I was like, "I am completely done. I can't go. I can't do this round and round and round thing again." And I remember me and my girlfriend stayed up really late, drank a bottle of wine. She was asking me, she's like, "If you could go on a date with." Anybody, who would it be right now? Just like clean slate. And I said, I want to give this Andrew East guy a shot. That's crazy. And it just so happened to be on my birthday. I had no clue. And I drunk texted you. I was like, come to LA question mark and fell asleep. So the the weird thing is like Sean as a celebrity knows a lot of people like she meets Mm -hmm. a lot of people, but the world is really small for Very her. Like small. she didn't actually like interact with a lot of people. So yeah. I guess I had my name had entered the orbit at an interesting time it did. where you know this relationship was ending and I was able to swoop in. I'm a lucky guy, is what that has to say. So anyway, I get this text. I wake up and I had like a 8 a.m. class or 7:30 a.m. class. It was like a, it was about I did civil engineering in college, so this class, this class was about like cement. <laughs> and, and, or concrete and the benefits. I'm not kidding. I did a whole semester on that. Um, so I'm like so excited that you sent me this text. I send my dad the screenshot of it and like or it was like the boys text of my brothers and, and dad. And they were like, you gotta do it. And I was like, I'm in class. Which is wild. And it just so happened that that week, so this is the fall. I'm playing college football. We pretty much are booked every weekend in the fall. Mm-hmm. But we had a bye week, so we didn't have a game that week, which happens once a year. Yeah. And it was that weekend. And so I, I was like, I'm in class, and I, we only have like 36 hours off for our bye week. I would need to leave soon. And my dad was like, I just bought you a plane ticket. Go. So I le- I got up and left class, 
and I headed straight to the airport, literally just packed a backpack with my nicest clothes, which at the time was like these hiking shorts and like some ragtag button down. I had like, back in the day, I literally, there's a picture. I had one like, outfit. It was like khaki pleated. Don't make fun of my flag. Shorts that you would get from REI I've and changed. then an Abercrombie polo. <sighs> Throw it in. I land in LA. I uh, changed out of my athletic clothes into this nice outfit, quote unquote. And I, I was like, I didn't have a ride. I didn't know what I was doing. It was my first time in California. I get off the plane. I walk like two miles to this Best Western, go behind the bushes and change into my outfit. And then Which I- Which is not a great area in LA, around the airport. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, <laughs> it's but I, I don't know. Area. Life is an adventure, dude. It's all it part is. of the experience. And so then like we had tried to be, te- we were trying to text Sean. Him and his brother Guy, who I had met at London. Who had dr- driven up from San Diego where he was- training for cycling um we we're like all right yeah let's meet up for dinner and you had replied and said great or something like that and then g- crickets so i'm in la and we don't have any hard plans set we're like texting texting no response no response so this is now the 18th of september which is like a friday or saturday we show up to sean's apartment so you'd send us our your address to give context when he's texting me after he so i wake up the next morning and he's like i'm on my way and i got so nervous and i was also like oh my gosh which this is, is kind of creepy but also romantic and i don't know what to expect um but then i was in dancing with the stars rehearsal rehearsals all day so like i didn't have my phone on me nothing right no i didn't right dude she had texted our her address though so i said sh- like meet us at our apartment I'll meet you there right after rehearsals we show up we're in the parking garage like waiting a response we're literally just sitting in the car like 30 minutes is she gonna text us i don't know we're like making backup plans let's go to dinner here if it doesn't work out i didn't really like i had no skin in the game really i was just happy to be out there with my brother who i was gonna go watch he had a bike race that weekend anyway so there was like backup plans in place we finally get a response we show up I i got out of rehearsals we show up and i'll never forget this is the first time i laid eyes on you babe we're walking through that little apartment complex it's like orange and you came out to meet us and you were in a white shirt and Shannon was there with you and you were not smiling because I now under I, I realize in retrospect this was an odd situation, but <laughs> those big eyes of yours. I'll look at them right now. I'm about to cry, dude. <laughs> Don't cry, baby. I haven't thought about this like that uh, in, a, in a while. I oh, remember that was the first time I saw you. Oh. Oh my gosh, you are gonna cry. <laughs> I remember it was a really stressful time because to put yourself into my shoes, coming off of a four-year relationship, I I was so guarded and I was so jaded and living in Hollywood and coming off the Olympics. I didn't know if I could trust people. I had major trust issues. This guy just flew from one drunk text all the way across the country. <clears throat> Shoot your shot. I was exhausted from rehearsals with Derek Huff where we were getting ready for the finale it was close to the finale. Um, I was with Shannon, all these things. And I was just like, what am I doing? Like, right. I have no time for this. Like, what am I doing? And I remember meeting you. Um, we ended up, it was me, Shannon, Andrew, and Guy. So it wasn't like super intimate. And we were trying to be like very safe. Um, we you, went to the Grove. Yeah, which is like a little outdoor farmer's market. You were in flip-flops. I'll never forget that. <laughs> yes. And you were like way shorter than I had expected you to be. Way shorter. <laughs> but we, we had like a little bit of a walk down there. Yeah. We were trying to make small talk. And we were walking through the Grove in LA. Um, we walked to the farmer's market. It was like dinner time. We ordered like seven different dinners. Um. Also, this was my 21st birthday. Yeah. And I had never drank. Until I, I I never drank until I was 21. And, and <laughs> I just, some of the my favorite memories from that night was, again, I was very jaded living in Hollywood and stuff. I, I, I grew up with this dream of meeting this gentleman. He reminds me of my dad, pretty much. And I hadn't really been treated like that yet, like by the way you did. And we were walking through the farmer's market. And it's like a farmer's market. It's not like a nice restaurant of any kind. And you would like pull the chair out for me. And you would always walk next to the street 
and like put me on the inside of the sidewalk and you asked to pray before dinner which like was like an arrow to my heart i was like are you kidding me is this like a strategy or is this like actually him it was amazing but i was i just had this guard up all night of this guy seems amazing but he seems too good to be true it's interesting i've never thought about this but like you know when i first saw you it was like a fish out of water kind of i saw you as a fish out of water yeah where like here you are this amazingly strong capable talented powerful woman and then like i meet you and like there's clearly layers of insecurity or Mm self-doubt and so my it was like a challenge i was like Mm -hmm. i gotta figure out how to get through that and see the essence the, the core of this girl i will never forget towards the end of dinner whatever we were sitting up on like a rooftop balcony in the grove we had ordered, Shannon had ordered your first drink, which was like a lemon drop. No, she ordered me a shock top beer. It was my first drink ever. And then a lemon drop. at the <laughs> se- We were going restaurant to restaurant because like a bunch of little like kind of just like outside yeah. restaurants. But Also, I don't remember Guy being there, which is funny. I was, <laughs> I was locked in on you. But I remember sitting on this rooftop towards the end of the night. And you were just so dorky in the sweetest way trying so hard to like make me laugh or come up with jokes. I was trying very hard unsuccessfully. And I just was like, I think as you, just like you were trying to figure me out, I was trying to figure you out and I was trying to figure out what was sincere. If it all was sincere, if it was a ploy, if you had motive, if you had intention, like all these things. And I remember I can like picture you sitting with your smile and your kind of long hair. And there was this big Forever 21 sign behind you in the grove. And I remember just thinking, like, he's so just sweet. It was so refreshing. Hmm. And then quickly, like, my guard would be like, oh, it's not going to work. Okay, enough sappiness. So at this point, we'd gone to, like, seven restaurants. Yeah. Sean was essentially, like, Pushing all the food that she wanted to eat but couldn't because yeah. she's going through Dance with the Stars, has all this body stuff going on on me. So I'm stuffed. Had a lot of baggage that I wasn't willing to share at that night. It's my first time drinking alcohol. Guy <laughs> and I are sitting there. You and Shannon were not drinking. We go to this last restaurant, Umami Burger. And they're like, it's, I don't know, not that late, but we were wrapping down the night. And they're like, where are you guys staying? And we said, we're sleeping in a car. I like, I was a minute. I, we were going to. It was totally fine and normal for us to have done that. Then Sean says, "I gotta go to the bathroom," and Shannon goes with her. So we're sitting there. We're like, "Wonder what they're talking about." And they come back in the bathroom. We were like, "Do we offer?" Because we lived in an apartment. We had three bedrooms, and I was like, "Do we offer them a place to stay?" Like they seem genuine, but this seems like a cardinal sin that you don't do. Like all these First things. First time meeting. Whatever. <laughs> and we were like, "Okay, uh, we we'll we'll offer them a place to stay, whatever." just out of kindness and we go back and we're like well you can take like our guest bedroom if you want and they're like done we would love that you were just doing you were just offering it as a gesture and we took it we pounced on the opportunity so we drove back to sean's apartment we like said good night that you guys were in some upstairs room and I'll, i'll never forget like i made some cheesy joke but i saw that was that was when at the end of the night i saw the first smile from me and i was like i'm hooked because really the night had not gone like (laughs) it was not great but then i saw a smile and it was game over guy and i shared this bed and we took a picture you and shannon apparently had like we like barricaded yourself yeah we shared the upstairs bedroom and like pushed the dresser against the door i don't know again we were just so nervous and guarded and then uh we were supposed to go get, we were supposed to have like another meetup that next day. It didn't happen, but Guy and I wrote like a little thank you note or poem because uh, we woke up earlier than you were. Mm-hmm. And we didn't see you that next day, but I guess it was, no, it wasn't enough. Because then I thought I sealed the deal, but then you ghosted me for nine months. Anyway, there's more details on that on the internet. <laughs> but uh, that was our first date and it ended in a sleepover, but with my brother. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was great. Oh. Uh, uh, would not recommend that 
by the way, for those listening, probably an unorthodox whole situation, but here it we are. Worked out, baby. That was fun to reminisce. That was really for you and me. I haven't really thought about it. Um, you want to tell the next story? Which one? Well, let's fast forward to um, the day after our wedding. So leading up to our wedding, Andrew was bouncing around the NFL. Um, you had gotten released from the Chiefs, and we were waiting to hear what team was picking you up. I got picked up by the Seahawks. You got picked up by the Seahawks. That January 2016. Yep. And then got released. And we it was around the time of a couple months leading up to our wedding. We were waiting to hear who was going to pick you up. And all these different teams had different reporting dates. So in planning our wedding, we picked a weekend that we thought was safe. Yeah. And we were like, I don't think any team has a reporting date on this weekend. If you get picked up, whatever. We so, can do our honeymoon. We'll get married, go on our honeymoon, and then go to camp. Great. It's like two weeks before our wedding, the Raiders pick you up. And they say that reporting date is the day of our wedding. April 16th, we had to be there at the hotel. April 17th was our first team meeting. Yeah. So April 16th is, was our wedding date, two weeks out. And we were like, oh, my gosh. So I remember Andrew had a call with the coach saying, like, I'm getting married. <laughs> And they said, no problem, just come in the next morning. So we ended up having to book flights at 6 a.m. the morning after our wedding from Nashville to Oakland so that Andrew could start practice. Yeah, we had a meeting at like 2 o'clock Pacific time. I'll never forget. So like weddings are a big party, right? You're up late. You're tired. This has been like emotionally. You're exhausted. The whole thing. You're on your feet the whole time. And I'm like, I'm not ready to play football right now. But I'll, I remember all we wanted to do that next morning after we woke up was like lay in that hotel bed. But we were we were in that hotel room for a total of like six hours because we had to wake up, pack our bags for the next day. We didn't have anything packed. We Classic Sean and packed. Andrew. We had just purchased a house. There's a bunch of logistics <laughs> going on with that. And then there's like this whole wrap up of like getting all the party supplies back and deconstructed. Our families and like were, I will never forget Nash. getting the knock on the door at like 4 a.m. Oh my God. We had been asleep for maybe two hours. And I was so mad. I was like, we aren't getting on a plane. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. No, you were very supportive. You were, you were not going to let me miss my, my, no, first I was just exhausted. It was a long, so we said, oh, and then there, we almost, the, uh, the flight, I remember, was packed first of all and we like we almost missed it or it was booked or oh oh there were uh it was overbooked overbooked and they were trying to kick us off yeah. for the next one and i was like we can't do it yeah and then we got on the plane and we didn't have seats next to each other we just got married you know we were like we got married last night could, could someone switch <laughs> us but i will never forget when we landed it was really exciting it was this new beginning being married adventure um but we we didn't know we had now been within the NFL long enough to like understand how it all works. So going to Oakland, we didn't rent like an apartment or a house to stay in. We agreed to stay in the hotel accommodations that they set us up in, which was Inn. the Hampton Inn at the end of the runway. Like the view, the, you'd <laughs> open up the, the window airport. and it was like the, the runway. And every morning at like 630, planes taking off. And you're like, all yep. right, sweet. And I remember that first day. Andrew went off to his team meeting. I took the car. I drove into San Francisco. And I was like, you know what? This is day one of our life together. Um, I found a Target. I loaded up on groceries and a skillet. An electric skillet. Electric plug skillet. In, which I think is illegal and frowned upon. But. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that in a hotel. But we were on the first floor and we had two windows. And I came home and I was like, I'm going to cook us our first dinner as like married couple. So I opened the windows Turned on the skillet, made kebabs, mm-hmm. made a full salad and sides and everything, and we just sat there together in our little Hampton Inn apart or Hampton Inn room, yeah. mind you. And it was not fancy. It was not a bougie room that had like the living room with couch in it. It was like no, we were eating dinner room. on the bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, that was really. I remember there was no cell phone service either, and like this was we had just gotten married, and like People magazine and all these people wanted to do uh, interviews and. It was always a nightmare to do that. But 
it was such a good thing for us to go through, I feel like, because we had all this stuff planned out and it was a good lesson for us to learn that things don't always go as you planned them, but mm-hmm. that doesn't make it less of an adventure. It's actually quite the opposite, you could say. And those are some of the sweetest days of our young marriage, don't you think? They are. Okay. And we stayed out there. Yeah, we st- just got married. A couple months. Had a house. We stayed out there for months, like yeah. just in this hotel room. Sean and I were uh, exploring the Bay Area, we which got- brings us. <laughs> no. Which brings okay. us to our the last, last story. Of this episode. <laughs> I don't know how much to share of this. The sponsor of today's show is probably one of our favorite companies ever, AG1. For sure. We're huge fans of AG1 in our house, in everybody else's house when we travel. <laughs> Everyone gets AG1. They do. And as a mom, I kind of always felt tired and depleted when I woke up in the morning and it became hard to keep up with taking a bunch of different pills and supplements every day to feel my best. Now when I wake up, I drink my AG1 before doing anything else and it makes me feel energized, revitalized, and I love having peace of mind knowing my body is getting all the nutrients it craves throughout the day. I feel the same way, babe. And I also think this is the perfect time to start taking AG1 with the kids going back to school because we all know how many (laughs) germs they're bringing home and it's good to arm your immune system. It is. I agree. And with every scoop of AG1, it is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and whole food source ingredients that benefit your gut health, boost your mood, and also give you a healthier looking hair, skin, and nails. Because why not? AG1 replaces your multivitamin, probiotic, and more in one simple drinkable daily habit. It's super convenient, and Sean and I actually drink this every single day. It's like a it's a staple it, in our morning. It truly is. If you want to take ownership over your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com forward slash couple things. That's drinkag1.com forward slash couple things. Check it out. We'll link it down below. Let's get back to it. Guys. Um, so... It was Andrew's birthday. What year was that? 2000 and let's see, 18. Yeah. I was, uh, no, so it was year 2017. The season would have been 2018. Yeah. So I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, it was after the miscarriage. Okay, great. So it was 2018. Yep. So, um, and I say that because I, it was after the miscarriage that we had, I was, getting my body back, pushing away these thoughts of like, I was ready to have a baby and get pregnant. I surprised Andrew after practice one day, which happened to be his birthday. And I had bought us plane tickets from, it's like a little puddle jumper plane from um, Oakland to Napa Valley. And I, he had no idea what we were doing. And I booked this beautiful little cottage and I was like, we're just going to go do a day in Napa Valley. (laughs) <laughs> and um, I was like ready to like let loose and have fun with my husband and not worry about anything. And we get there and I have like a car service waiting for us that's going to drive us from like vineyard to vineyard to vineyard. I had planned out five vineyards. Essentially, it, it sounds way bougier than it is. In Napa, it is. because you have these wine tastings, like instead of having an Uber, you'll just like book. There's like a bunch yeah. of like tour services that yeah. you book for like six hours. <clears throat> yes. So I booked a bunch of like really nice um, tastings tastings for us to go to. And we get to the first one and I'm so excited just to be like spending time with you. It's been a wild year. Patroni in yep. the cave. That was our first one. <laughs> with the dog. dog. I think his name was Daisy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. We drove up oh. to this first vineyard, which was like this cave in the side of the it hills. Was, uh, would, would and they, you walk to like the check-in like walk down the hill you'll see the you'll see the cave and daisy will meet you and she'll show you where to go huge huge great dane and we're like a dog and they're like yeah daisy and it's this massive great dane and she literally like meets you turns around and walks you where you're supposed to go whatever so we start doing these tastings i have way too much confidence in myself Sean and I are like pretty competitive in a healthy way, but yeah. you got to think like when we travel, it's like efficiency. Let's knock out as much as we can. So Sean had booked like four or five tastings. I remember getting in the car and the driver was like, wow, we got a full day. This is, are you sure you're up for this? And we were like, yes. yes. And at each tasting, you're probably getting like 
two to three glasses of yeah. total wine. And Sean and I are lightweights. And if I drink two glasses, I'm tipsy. If I drink three, I'm drunk. This is back in the day when we used to drink wine. <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was like a phase we went through, and now we don't really do that anymore. Then we got to like the third tasting. I mean, really, it was at the end of the second where we're like, <laughs> this is going to be a haul. Andrew was like not, he was not finishing his like tasting glasses. And I was like, oh, come on, this is like the best wine. And I was <laughs> drinking the rest of his. This is all very poor choices, guys. But we got to like the third. I think we got to the third one, which had this like petting zoo. Oh my gosh. And I will never forget. <laughs> I was a goner. I was a goner. And <laughs> that was, that, oh man. So yeah, I yeah, I had heard stories and was talking to the driver about like uh how hmm. we should do this. And he's like, well, you have a lot. So like, make sure that you're either spitting out the wine after you taste it or yeah. not drinking the whole thing. Yeah. Sean took that as like a challenge, which like, is not a good thing. It's fine. Um, and so we get to this third one. We have a vlog about this. We I think <laughs> we got to pull that back and get some footage. Sean is just giggly and loopy. And like that third tasting was the peak of it. The fourth tasting it started to like get a little concerning. And then the fifth was at like this restaurant that we're going to eat dinner at. Um, and it was like five o'clock, right? So you start at like noon and then we went to five. She had booked this epic restaurant. Oh, uh, it was like a Michelin star restaurant. Oh my gosh. I'll never forget on the way there. Uh, Sean got in an argument, which she never does with this Uber driver about. I something. remember that. <laughs> what was it about? A holistic medicine. Oh my gosh. It was hilarious. And oh they're just jib jabbing. And then we get to the restaurant, and Sean is just she just goes quiet. She's not talking. She goes from super chatty to not talking at all, and she's just sitting there like <laughs> <laughs> this. Happened, this is the only time I've ever seen her like this. She's like sitting there smiling, just looking at me quiet, like this. <laughs> and, and she's like, "I think we should go." <laughs> and, and so we had let the driver loose. He was done for the day. Yep. So we had to get an Uber. Got an Uber. And this is like my birthday dinner. I was like pumped, you know? And it had been a hilarious day with Sean. We get this Uber. We get in the car. And she like lays on my lap. And then she looks at me. And you know like when people do that? <laughs> and you're like, this is not going to end well. We had to pull over on the yeah. highway. Yeah. So I could puke on the high side of the interstate. Yeah. Multiple times. And then we got back in and got back to our place. No, Sean, we pulled through the gates yes. of our place, and I had to get out again. And there was a whole bus load there of tourists. There was <laughs> a then, whole bus of tourists, and, and they I'm were all like Sean Johnson. They were like Sean. The bus driver <laughs> walks off and hands me napkins. Oh man, I was so embarrassed. I wreck. walked back to like our little cottage, and I. Walked straight into the bathroom, which had a heated floor, which was amazing. That was fantastic. And I passed out. Not like passed out, so but it's like, like I fell asleep. It's like 545 at this point. It was like opening weekend in the NFL. And uh, I thought Sean and I were going to have this big night, romantic, you know, maybe get some naked time in there. Sean went to bed at 545, was done for the night. I'm watching the Raiders game yep. by myself yep. on my birthday. It's like seven, 6 o'clock. And the, the long snapper gets hurt. <laughs> Because I wasn't signed at this time. I was bouncing around. Long never gets hurt. I get a call like during the game. And they're like, hey, we need you at a tryout tomorrow morning. Yeah. So it worked out great because we're like 45 minutes away. But we need you here tomorrow morning like ready to go. We, like we, we're going to sign you because this guy got hurt. This is another NFL just faux pas on my my. Yeah. I've sold so many. There's all these reasons why I didn't make the NFL. And it's becoming apparent that it's my fault. <laughs> no wonder I didn't make it. We had just had this big day drinking wine, <laughs> and I show up at this tryout. Would not recommend, but I had not drank that much wine. It was a crazy series of events, though. A memorable birthday for sure. The place you booked was beautiful, and I did not make the Raiders. Long story short, but it was a, it was not a fun... because of me. No, 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 no. no. Uh, uh, I guess we need to go. Yeah. Um, we have. We have like this whole list of stories. We've maybe told 10 out of 50. So 
I hope you're enjoying the series. Thank you for listening. I'm Andrew. I'm Sean. And we are idiots. <laughs> yes. That's we all are. we got. That's we all are. we got. Till next time. See ya.